Hey everybody, what's going on? It's Astonishing Studios, and today I'm going to show you how to build your own Lego Pringles dispenser. As you can see in the thumbnail, you can also do this with big Pringles cans, as well as other flavors like sour cream and onion, and cheddar cheese. The way this machine works is self-explanatory. You take a Pringles can, open it, flip it upside down onto the dispenser, and rotate this to get a Pringle to three Pringles at a time. Before we get any further into the video, I would like to thank Nipe Nipe for inspiring this machine, as well as LegoWiz777, who helped me design the mechanism. If you would like, you can check out their channels in the description, and I hope that this shout out can boost their channels by about 100 subscribers, which would provide a decent compensation for their efforts. Once the machine is set up, you can put a Pringles cap beneath the dispenser to act as a bowl, or you can take your own little glass plate, and then you just start rotating clockwise. Now let's go on to show you the sour cream and onion and cheddar cheese machines in action. From this second to this second, you are going to replay the video two times and follow accordingly because we are going to make three legs and I will only literally show you how to make one. So to start things off, take a one by six brick and a one by six plate. Then we're going to build this weird looking thing. All it is is a one by eight or whatever makes that up, a one by seven plate or whatever makes that up, and then a one by six tile. You're going to snap this on over here, leaving a two stud empty area so we can put on our four by one curved piece. Then you're going to take an inverted one by six slope. Now a one by four brick and on top of that two one by four plates. Before that actually, you should probably take two one by two plates, put that over here. Then you're going to do this. So that's one of the two by two with the one by one cutout. So pretty much a yellow L and then a yellow one by two and a white one by one plate. Put this over here, snap this on. Then we're going to take this gray one by one with the hole and put in one of these blue pieces with a stud connector tip and place it over here. Now we have three really cool looking legs, but we're going to move two of them to the side because we need to modify one. We're not going to add any new pieces to this leg, but we're actually just going to rotate this around. So to do such, you're going to separate it right here so we can remove the L piece and the one by one with the hole that we did earlier. Then you're going to flip this over. And now you're going to take this off. Take off the one by one. And the one by two plate. Stack this over here. Stack the one by two plate. Stack the one by one white plate. Snap this together and put this on. Like the legs of the machine, you're going to repeat this step, however, only once. So to begin, we have our Lego plates laid out. I can tell you what they are. It's a two x four plate, a two x four plate, a two x three plate, a two x three plate, a one x three plate on the left, a one x three plate on the right, and a one x two yellow smack dab right in the middle. Now we're going to put on a bunch of one x three curved bits. Now at the bottom, we're going to put on two on each side of these one by three white curved. And color corresponding four by one curved pieces. To clarify, that's three four by one curves, two four by one curves, and three four by one curves, red, yellow, red. Now let's turn this over. And over here, we're not going to do much. We're going to put on a white one by two on the rightmost and the leftmost curves that are white. I think I already said that. Uh, then we're going to take two of these one by two plates. And as you can see, you're going to put one of these inverted one by two ramps on top. And you're going to do the same on the opposite side. And remember, you're going to repeat this portion of the video once more. 
First, we're going to make a 1x10 out of two 1x4s and a central 1x2. On top of that, we have two 1x4s to make up a 1x8, and then a 1x4 brick on top. Then from here, we are going to actually move this back for a second. So we're going to make this piece, which is comprised of a 1x4 brick. On top of that, a 1x3, a 1x2. On top of the 1x3, we have a 1x2, and on top of the first 1x2, we have a 2x3. We can snap this on right over here. Perfect. Let's rotate this over and we're going to build something similar for the other side. So to make this piece, we're going to take a 1x4, a 1x3, a 1x2, another 1x3, 1x2, it's like this layer but offset by one, and then a 1x4 brick on top. Snap that on the other side. We can look at it like this. From here, we're going to take a 1x4 brick and a 1x3 brick. On the bottom of that, we're going to put on a 1x3 brick, put that on the left side, and we're going to use the exact same pieces, that is the 1x3, the 1x3, and the 1x4, and put it on the right side. From here, we're going to build this, and I know we're building a lot of weird things right now. It'll look fine in the long run, and it's actually simplifying the steps when I do it in these bite-sized chunks. Anyways, to build this piece, you're going to take a 1x3 and a 2x4, put that on the bottom, and on the very top, we're pretty much going to connect that together with a 2x3, a 1x3, and a 1x2. There you go, now it's in focus. And then we're not going to actually snap this on just yet because we don't have the pieces to do so. So we're actually just going to build this again, but facing the opposite direction. So on the bottom, it's another two by four, one by three. And on the top, it's a two by three, a one by three, and a one by two. We're also not going to attach that either. Now we have this element. So a two by three, a one by four. And on the top, we have a one by four brick. Let's snap that over here. And then we're going to build something similar so a 1x4, a 1x3, let me move this back for a second, there we go, a 1x4, a 1x3, another 1x4, we're going to snap that on right over here. And then we should actually be able to, what the heavens was that, we should actually be able to snap it on. So this part connects, and then this one, I believe we'll have to wait a little while for that. From here, we can actually connect everything together using, first of all, a 1x4 plate. Let's snap that right at the bottom of this element, right here, around that corner. And we can do the same on the other corner. So it looks like this. And then to secure it even further, we'll take a two by four brick and snap it right on top. All right, so very cool. Then we're going to take a yellow one by eight brick with seven holes. And then we're going to take a one by six plate and make sure the studs fit into those holes so we have the one on the rightmost side with nothing. Then you're going to put that on so we have a one stud space in the front and then it should line up with this two stud back wall. Cool. So now we are going to take a one by four, a two by four, and a one by three. And we're going to put that over here. Therefore it should connect the walls and it should hold the yellow more securely in place. You're going to take one of these one by two pieces with one central hole and put it right here in the central back area. Then let's move this to the side. We're going to take, I believe this is a 12 stud. Yes, this is a 12 stud long axle. So I think it's the biggest one you can get without getting a floppy axle. And we are going to put on three of these wheels. So the first one, voila. The second one, voila. And the third one, still a piece of cake. Let's push this down so we have it where we want it with about a three stud space. Now take this piece, which you put on the end of axles, put it right about here. And then we're going to take another one by two with one central hole, place it over here. Let's pull this back and wiggle it in. Now that we have this in, let's build the pieces that go right around here. So it starts off with a one by two, and two one, or two two by threes. Now we are going to lay down some bricks to finish off this layer. Awesome, so you will notice we actually have not done the back layer and this two by two space. So the first piece is a two by two and a two by four. We're going to put that here. Here's a two by four and on top of that, a two by two and a two by three. So we have a two by two space here and a one by, or just a one by two offset. 
we're going to put that down here. Then two two by fours offset by one stud. From here, we'll take a one by four and put on top of that a one by three and stack that over here. And now we can put over here a one by two, another one by two, a one by four, a one by two, and a one by three. Now we can actually flip this to the front and we can do more of those chunk building steps. Here we're going to take two one by fours, a one by two, and a third one by four. Put this right here. Take a one by four and on top of that a one by three. Afterwards a one by four and a one by two offset by one. Then another one by two will go over here. So it should have one stud of free space. And then like we did on the other side, a one by four and a one by three, stack it over here. So you will see that we have a blank one by four space. We're going to fill that up with a yellow one by four with three holes that has those two pegs with these stud knob tips. We're going to put that on both sides. And now we will take a one by four, a one by three, and on top of that, we're going to put on a six by one curved piece, place it here. We can do the same for the back part. And then we're going to build two of this part, which is a one by four, or no, I lied, a one by three, and then a four by one curve with a one by two and a one by one plate to fill up that cutout space. See, here's my second one, and you'll never guess where we'll put them. We'll put the first one on the back and the first one on the front. Remember this complicated looking thing that we made earlier? We're actually going to put it to use. We're going to slap it on to these blue parts so it clicks into place. And then we're going to put on the second one on the opposite side. So you'll need double-sided tape, scissors, and these stickers or photos. You can find them in the link of the description of this video called something like decorative decals or stickers or something like that. I put mine on normal printer paper. What you're going to do is cut these out. You're going to cut, first of all, this one out and the white oval. So you will leave the green as excess waste. And then you will cut out the black arrow so that there's white waste. And then this one, we're actually going to hold off on till later. It's a little bit more complicated, but for now, just focus on cutting these two out. Now I have cut out my Pringle face and the arrow. I actually use the white side as the front because our Lego creation uses white Lego bricks, but it does not use black. Therefore, this wouldn't correlate with the theme, but it was just good for tracing over or scissoring out pretty much. So consider this the back. Now we are going to put double-sided tape around the outline of this. So four pieces of double-sided tape later, we have this. And then I'm going to put two small pieces of double-sided tape on this arrow, one over here and one over here. All right, so here we have the double-sided tape on this arrow. You probably can't see it too clearly, but as long as you know there's double-sided tape on there, you will be fine. If you have anything excess hanging over and it makes you feel uncomfortable, just cut it off with the scissor. It's not going to be the end of the world. And now we are going to get to the Pringle hair that I was talking about. We're actually going to leave a small area of the white available. So the area below this curve, we are actually going to leave alone just about. So now we have the hair and you might notice that I just got two cuts because of the way I was holding the double sided tape. So be aware you might get a boo boo or two during this. So whatever, just be a man and suck it up. Um, and then what I would actually like to do is cut off a little bit of the white because I think that's too much for what we need. So I'll cut it off so you can see what I mean. This looks like the ideal amount of white space we want at the bottom. Here we have a one by six brick and on top of that are two one by two bricks. Then we have another 1x2 brick, however it's black and it has an axle hole, a 1x6 plate on top of that, a 1x4 brick on top of that, and instead of two 1x1s, there are two 1x1s, each with one hole. And in those holes we are going to put in these blue pegs with the knobbed tip. Now you will make two of this part, it's simply two pieces, it's the 1x4 arc or arch, and then you're gonna put on a one by two white plate, put that on the right side and on the left side. Now we're going to build something similar, but a bit bigger. So you're going to take two three by one curved pieces and then a one by two white plate, put that on top. 
and you're going to build the same thing for the bottom. However, you're going to realize that we can now connect this on. All right, so we're going to take two more of these blue pegs with the knob tips, put one in on the second stud from the right, and the second stud from the left is where the second one goes. And then we're just going to snap it on. Awesome. So from here, we're actually going to take the Pringles face and place it on ever so carefully. And then on the back of this, we are going to take our hair and make sure to put on one piece of double-sided tape. And when you put it on the back, make sure that from the front, it lines up so you don't see any of that extra white space. We can kind of see some right now. So let me carefully move it around. Awesome, so that is our Pringle face, which we will turn, and you have to make sure that it's not covering this piece. So we're going to put this on to correspond with this axle. Awesome, and then you can see that this turns. How fantastic is that? We're going to take our arrow and place it along the top. So now people know that they need to turn it clockwise. Now let's actually turn this upside down so you can see the bottom of it. It looks a little bit ugly, but it also looks pretty simple, which is good. First, we're going to remove this one by four plate, but we will need it later, so don't totally discard it. Now build three of this part. It is the one by four arch, double-sided in regards to the curve. And then on the bottom, you're going to put on a two by two plate. You're going to build two more of these. And on top of two of these, you're going to put on a stack of two one by two plates. And on the third one, you're going to put on a stack of two two by two plates. Okay, so now we are going to take the one with two two by two plates, lift up the Pringles machine a bit, and snap it on right here. I'm gonna press it in. Then we're going to put on the other two on the right side and the left side. Now we are going to take the legs that we made at the beginning of the tutorial and finally put them on. Put this one on the left, another one on the right. And then you will take the final leg that is left, clip it on over here. And then we are going to take our one by four plate and close it off. Now we only have four pieces left to put on and they are all the same. They are the one by six inverted bricks. So the first one's going here. The second one is going here. And the third and fourth, I'm sure you can assume. bring your Pringles can into play. So you're going to take off the lid. This can serve as your bowl that goes beneath the Pringles dispenser. And what I would suggest is taking a handful of Pringles, such as this, and situating it so that the curve right here is sitting perfectly on the wheel. Now make sure that the rest of your Pringles are lined up when you put the container on, or what you can do, which actually seems like the easier option right now, since we have a small can, is to put the rest of the Pringles on top. Make sure that they are neatly stacked. You can see that they're almost going out of shot here. And take your can and put it upside down, right on top, and make sure that the Pringles are not in the way of the rim as it sits down. And make sure the Pringles can faces frontwards. And just like that, you are officially done with the Pringles machine. Congratulations, you have just finished building your Lego Pringles dispenser. If you want to build this and you just watched it for the curiosity of seeing how this is made, you can go down in the description and I have information available about the easy method and the advanced method of building this machine. Anyways, thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys with my next video.